whether it be through mobile clinics, whether it be through the Malaria program, through voluntary collaborators, through community health workers, the ministry has always had a presence. I remember the Malera guys, they used to give me stories of crossing the rivers. They used to have to camp out there and eat only bread, you know. They suffer just like the patient. My supervisor that recently retired, Mr. Harry Johnston, and myself, we were leading a crew of spraymen going into one of these far reach communities. And we drove approximately about two hours to get to a village we call Krikisarako. There we had to prepare ourselves to hike in for another hour and a half or two. And just when we got to the entrance of the village, we realized that it was flooded. Mr. Johnson never gave up. He took off his, his shirt, his pants, he swam into the community and brought two doors out. Our team got in the doors and we ended up spraying that village. By the time we drove from Krike Sarko to the main highway, so many people, they were looking for us. They thought something had really gone wrong. Nothing went wrong, all we did was we accomplished what we went in to do. There are many people that could detect a malaria case, from a voluntary collaborator to a community health worker, to a health center clinic, or even at the hospital level. We have our passive case surveillance network, where we have the voluntary collaborators, the community health workers who are assisting us, and also we have established sentinel sites in the banana plantations. I am proud to say we have now established a network with competent microscopists and will continue to do microscopic training to strengthen our capabilities in diagnosing malaria and most importantly we are performing malaria RDTs especially in those remote communities. We have different organizations that can come together and we can contribute to keep this zero cases of malaria here in Belize. In terms of cross-border surveillance for malaria or vector-borne diseases in general, we maintain binational relationships with Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama, Guatemala, Mexico. These are our brothers that we've been working with for so long. And so I think that the fight continues because we share a common border. One of the first signs that shows that you're, something is wrong with your body is fever. So they would come to the clinic and the first thing we would eliminate is malaria. When the malaria is negative, they do a dengue test. When the dengue test is negative, they do a COVID test. As everything is negative, we tend to do other tests to see what could be the cause of the fever. Vamos en casa en casa a chequear con si hay calentura, fiebre. El tratamiento es completamente gratis y que el análisis que le hacen es todo gratis también. Solo que necesitamos que cooperen y que participen junto con nosotros, porque solo nosotros no podemos. Necesitamos la cooperación de la aldea también, igual como el pueblo también. If somebody comes positive by one of these RDTs, then immediately activates our surveillance system. So it has to be reported to vector control, to our public health inspectors, where we find out where these people live, where they've traveled, who their family members are, where they work, and we immediately go out into the fields to perform active surveillance on these persons who would have been considered close contacts with these people who test positive. Anybody could have fever, yes, we know that, but we have to ensure that there is no malaria. That is our strength because we are screening all fever cases. What we need to do as a country is not let down our guards and be able to continue the good work that has been happening. To reach here, it's not just the government, it's not just the program, but it's a unified effort, the input from everybody and all the stakeholders. For example, community committees were formed in villages whereby entire villages were organized to come out and, and do the work for themselves. Landscaping, getting rid of still water and treatment of waterways and including protecting themselves. We work together, we clean the area together and make sure they keep the area clean so that we don't have any malaria in this community. My motivation is basically to see people get well. I have an ill son, you know, and I know what it is to have someone that is 
not feeling well in the family. To see someone ill and then two weeks later to see them doing much better, I mean, it gives you the drive, it gives you the energy to push on and keep doing what we do simply because we're saving lives. <laughs>